Welcome back to Overtime. Lee Patterson with you here on KATO. Joining us in the studio live and in living color is John O'Mara, head football coach at Eastern Arizona College. John, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And I guess if I have the right button pushed, how about try that again? John, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can hear you now. If you push all the right buttons, it's amazing what works and what doesn't. So, John, it's uh, been a uh, been a a while since we've talked to you. You've been the all the all the off season since we last spoke in December, on a very cold and windy day in Hutchinson, Kansas, which is and without the outcome, n- nobody with Eastern Arizona College was looking for a forty two fourteen loss at the hands of the Blue Dragons. Uh, it catches up to date on what you've been doing since uh, since that cold day in Kansas. Well, you know, we've we've watched a lot of film. Uh, Hopefully, have made a lot of corrections and uh, want to build on what, on what we started. You know, it's nice to finally get to that game. You know, I think we we're excited. Uh, definitely, we didn't play our best game. Uh, you know, the knock on last year's team is, of course, we turned the football over too much. And you know, you look at the stats. We won the stats and uh, lost the turnover battle. I think we turned it over five times and uh, to their one. And you're not going to beat a good football no. team when you turn. And it they over. were a good, they were a good team. I mean, not not unbeatable but there I think it was going in to score somewhere before halftime and Cody Von Oppen fumbled the ball near the goal line and they turned it in some points before halftime and and that really that turnover right there was probably the difference in the ball game yeah the two things that haunted us all year last year haunted us in the last game of course you know we started out the season with a 13 turnover game and barely lose to Glendale um and our special teams weren't real good. And at the end of the year, turnovers and special teams, we allowed them to, to run return. a kickoff back and a punt return. And those are, you know, when you give up easy points, it's tough to overcome. And momentum and things, we were making a little bit of a comeback, and we let them run that punt back to kind of stretch them back out with a big lead. And, you know, it was just one of those things that, you know, that's one of the things this, this season that we're working on. We started day one talking about turnovers and, of course, our special teams. And right now, to this point, we haven't turned the football over a whole lot, and our special teams have been 100% improved. And how long now have you guys been in camp? Just over a week. Um, you know, we uh, came in August 7th, and, uh, you know, like most teams probably, we're not in very good shape. Um, lots of talent, but, you know, right now you're getting the bumps and bruises, and, you know, we've probably got half the team sitting in the ice tub right now trying to get on the field for this second practice. And you guys have been uh, doing two-a-days every other day, right? That's the NJCAA rule. You, can, you can't do back-to-back two-a-days? Yeah, in college it's pretty easy, uh, you know, for the kids. Uh, you, can, you can practice one day. You can have a meeting on the field in an afternoon. And then the next day you can go two practices. Then you got to go through what's called a walk-through and a, and a one, one-a-day practice. So our camp's very easy, and that's what's frustrating as a coach. It's tough to get them in shape. You know, we're the high school kids. Sometimes they're going three-a-days. One thing about it, they get through camp, they're in, they're in shape. Yeah. Sometimes it takes us three or four games before we finally get in condition. And uh, luckily this year, three or four games might not be uh, – won't be that bad, that difficult of a road. Um, let's talk about some of the kids in camp, though, that are from here that some of the listeners here in the Gila Valley might recognize. Uh, Denver Householder, he's back uh, from a church mission and at uh, camp with you guys. Uh, Saver starting quarterback Brandon McEwen and uh, starting tailback from Thatcher Tyler Bryce are all in camp with you this year. Yeah, and uh, Denver uh, had a great spring. Uh, we were really excited uh, at the end of spring. I think about the second to last practice, he got a concussion, and you know he had plenty of time to get healed up. But he came back with the same momentum. Had, was really having a great fall camp, and then he just uh, twisted a knee. It's not a, a serious knee injury, but it's one of those things that he can't be out there. And I think that probably hurts him more than anything right now, is because he was he, running with the number twos, though, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was he... pushing for playing time and uh, and doing a great job. And uh, and like I said, we were really pleased with him, and uh, we're looking forward to him being a major contributor. And we still are. By no means are we, are we have we gave up on him. It's just, like I said, I talked to him this morning, and, you know, he's still limping a little bit. And one thing about our local kids, they're tough. And, and if he can get back on there, usually we got to slow them down. They're not the type of kid that's they're going to milk it. So, you know, I look to get him back probably by the end of next week. And, uh, and like I said, him being a major uh, contributor. 
The McEwen kid is, has done a great job. We're actually playing him at quarterback. Now, we will use him as some receiver and things like that. But uh, I'm sure you've got some, some tricks up your sleeve to, with the kid that can throw the ball at, at multiple positions. Yeah, and he's, and he's done a great job. Like I said, right now he's, he's pushing for second string. Um, and uh, it's just reps. Uh, he's got better and better and better and has had to work his well, way and, up. And this is a kid that, that didn't play quarterback in high school until his senior year. I mean, he's he's probably the furthest behind coming into camp than any of the other guys because they've probably played quarterback for three or four years. Yeah, no doubt. And like I said, he, he's done a great job, and he's just continuing to get better and better and better. And, again, we do a little things a little bit different. We're a running, run-oriented team. There's no doubt we like the fact that he can throw the football. But he's having to adjust. And like I yeah. said, he started out at about fifth string, and he's slowly but surely. Right now he's uh, pushing for our second string uh, position. And again, we haven't picked starters yet. He's working with the second group. Uh, we're going to have a scrimmage this Saturday, and that's when we'll really uh, next week finally start picking some ones, and, and there'll be a pecking order. But th- a lot of things can happen uh, in that scrimmage, and they can move their way up. And uh, through the first couple games, they'll have an opportunity to, to move their way up. Yeah, and, and that's the thing about college football that I don't know that our local kids understand is, man, if, if you're on the depth chart, you're an injury – or a bad attitude away from playing time. Oh, there's no doubt. Um, and, you know, the other thing is, is uh, you know, these kids are all true freshmen. Uh, we don't hardly have a true freshman in our one deep right now. But, but they're working and getting better, you know, and by game number five, they're no longer true freshmen. Right. Uh, Tyler Bryce has, has been doing a great job sticking it in there. He's, he's extremely tough. Uh, you know, right now he's, he's seeing that the speed of the game has changed. But the neat thing about it, every, every day, every game, or excuse me, every practice, they get used to the speed and adjust to it. And one thing people can be proud of, uh, our local kids are definitely tough and aren't, well, it, it, aren't, they aren't can't afford down to anybody. They can't afford not to be. I mean, they're, that's, that's one thing with, with small school kids. We've talked about it before, but n- now with some local kids in, with a chance to play this year, it, when they were in high school, they had to play. I mean, they didn't have an option of sitting out a series because there was nobody else to go in for him. And now some of, the, some of these big school kids are finding out that you get to college and, you know, if you got banged up in high school, coach was sitting you all week and playing you Saturday Friday nights. You get to college, especially in camp, if you're dinged up and not out there and you're not seeing them take reps, they just fall deeper on the depth chart. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, again, you got to give compliment to our local coaches, you know, because it's still an attitude. You know, they, mm-hmm. they've established a toughness, yeah. a pride. And one thing about it, they're afraid of nobody. And, and that gives you a chance to play at any level, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, like I said, I'm, I'm very pleased with our local kids and, you know, wish we had a few more. But uh, things are definitely going in the right direction. They're working hard and, and definitely representing their high school and their programs. And uh, so you mentioned earlier in that answer that you have a scrimmage this Saturday. Um, is that uh, open to the public? Can people come check it out? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, we'll start around five. We'll do some kicking, and then uh, then we'll get into an actual little bit of scrimmage. You know, we're so beat up, banged up. You also are, are so thin at this point. You want to do just enough to get some stuff on film to coach, but you don't want to – you know, bang somebody up real seriously. And uh, so, you know, we're at, at time frame, I can't really tell you how long we'll go, but, you know, we definitely want to get some plays and get some good, uh, again, some good matchups on film so we can correct some mistakes and try to get better. I did notice uh, we, we talked about some of those true freshmen from here, but let's talk now about some guys that are coming back that had great seasons last year. Uh, Rashawn Evans and Jarvis Bridge, to name a few, uh, your starting tailbacks. And then I did see Billy McFall was back in camp, even though he sustained a pretty serious injury in, in the spring camp. Yeah, you know, the, the trouble was last year we played a lot of freshmen, and it was a miracle that we could win nine football games with predominantly a freshman team. The nice thing is, is they're sophomores now, and right. uh, they took their lumps last year and hopefully are ready to give them out. But uh you know, Jarvis, definitely uh, we're looking for big things out of the running back. Uh, last year that was probably our, you know, one of our weak spots. Our strength was the offensive line. Right. Where, of course, we graduated a lot of people. And, and this So now year, the role's kind of reversed. you got a stacked backfield, but, you know, a young offensive line. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, they're working hard. And, and then we still have a couple returners coming back that are they're going to do real well for us. And uh, Elwood Clement. 
And Stern Vile turned down a one double A full ride scholarship to come back and play for the Monsters in hopes to uh, improve his stock. And he's already got offered to Kansas State and a couple other Division One schools. So big he's Dutch kid, yeah, big, he's big from Holland. Uh, he's a he's a big kid. He definitely made the right decision, you know, and uh, and we're pleased that he, that he wanted to come back. And again, it's a compliment to our school to our community, that a kid here would turn down a full ride scholarship to go to a, a Northwest Missouri and to uh, come back to Thatcher. To come back to Thatcher. And again, he loves it here, you know, yeah. and, and so we're, we're happy. And he, and he mentioned that I walked out the first time I saw him out there, he walked over to me and he and I, you know, spent 30 hours on a bus sitting right next <laughs> to each other on the way to Kansas and back. So we got to know each other uh, fairly well. And uh, he came up and said, Hey, I, he, he had actually told me on the way home last year from the game that he was probably going on to somewhere else and to see him come back I was glad that that he decided to come back and uh, and pursue uh, his degree here and then and then on to uh, other places great winning tradition under John O'Mara and another thing that uh, we failed to mention has led the nation in rushing at least four of those six years every year every year year since uh, he's uh, been a coach I know last year averaged uh, let's see I actually have it right here averaged 323 yards a game rushing last year and we'll bring back Coach O'Mara, and that has has been your staple. You've been you've run the option since everywhere you've been a head coach, and to get to the, the I mean the offensive line and and the backs we talked about is, is the key to that. Well, there's no doubt, and uh, this year we have probably the best group of running backs we've had. Uh, a lot of speed. Uh, some we're probably going to have the best fullback tandem that we've ever had here. And uh, we actually had to take a defensive back and move him to uh, fullback. Uh, his name's Ramadan Jamosi. Um, he was a kid that we had in spring. That'll be fun to say this year. He'll make <laughs> my all-name team. <laughs> exactly. Did a great job as a defensive back for us, but, you know, he's 200 pounds and runs 4-4 in the 40. You, you put, a, put a ball in his belly, let him run. Exactly. We don't we have a chance to have him uh, score some points for us instead of chasing the, the enemy around a little bit. And he made the move for the team and just got better and better and better. And then we actually bring back a kid named Devin Moan. I had him here a couple years ago. I uh, was a fresh out of high school, got a little homesick, decided to go back home, has been working out, uh, called me this uh, summer and said he wanted to come back. And it was kind of a no-brainer. He had had a great uh, camp before he actually left the first time, which happens every once in a while. A kid gets homesick, far away from home. And uh, he's from Denver, and uh, he actually uh, came back and's had a great camp so far. And, and so we're really looking for big things from that position. And that, and that keys the option is is if you have a fullback. I remember a couple of years ago, out of necessity, you knew Mike Smith, the fullback, who was your starting tailback, yep. and he had he was the leading rusher on the team at the fullback position. Yeah, there's no doubt. And then. Uh, so, like I said, we think that's going to be the best. We've never had two since I've been here. Uh, I think our first year we had Lester Graham, who was a linebacker that we made a fullback, and then uh, the big uh, rumbling kid from Alaska. Yeah, from Alaska, Bobby, yeah, Bobby Dunbar. Dunbar yep. yep. So, uh, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, Bobby Dunbar. But we just uh, we haven't had two guys there, and it's it's a tough physical position. Well, and, you're, you're uh, one on the option at the fullback. You're getting hit on every play because you're either getting the ball or getting a fake. Exactly, and so. We're really pleased where we're at at this point. Of course, we've got to keep them healthy. Our halfbacks, like I said, we've got more speed than we've ever had. We could start a track team here. So. No, yeah, I, I, uh, I talked to Rashawn Evans the other day, and I said, what would you run the 40? And he says, man, I was tight. I was slow. I ran it in like 4.35. I said, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, sl- you're, you're tight and slow. He says, I can get 4.2 if you give me loose. So. Well, the nice thing is we had also Tay Wright, uh, a quarterback, run 4.3 something. We also uh, – had uh, Conan Con- Fella. Oh, geez, I'm having trouble saying his name. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Hey, you. Yeah. He's one of those in, in camp when you just say, hey, you, come here. Um, we had a linebacker run 4-4. Four, four. Um, well, that, that gets us to the defensive side of the ball. I talked to several coaches during a rain delay the other day and said that the defensive line and defensive ends might be the quickest and, and biggest you've had. Yeah, that, again, that's a, it's it's scary to go against every day. They're that good, uh, you know. Yeah. But but the thing is, the thing that overall as a team that we're still hurting in our conditioning. But there's no doubt from uh, where we are right now, we're so much farther than we were uh, ahead than a year ago. Yeah. So again, we're pleased. They're uh, older, more mature guys. We actually got a kid named Brandon Ware transfer from Penn State in here. Uh, 
who's, you know, uh, coming here to improve his academics and hopefully go back to Penn State. But, you know, he's a big physical man that has really helped the interior of our defense. And, uh, you know, then we bring back, uh, of course, uh, we got a great secondary coming back, anchored by a transfer that uh, Cissé Mohammed. He's a transfer from Memphis. Uh, Made the Associated Press transfer list earlier this summer. I, I was watching ESPN scrolling across the bottom line. Um, CSA transferred from Memphis to Eastern Arizona College. So he's a pretty big-time player. He is. And, uh, and like I said, right, he came in and ran 4 threes, another one of those speed guys. That, uh, and he's 6'2", 199 pounds and, and a 4 three forty. He's already got five or six Division One offers, and so our, our, our secondary is going to be strong. And, then, you know, it's a complete team, and sounds like so far the key is to keeping them healthy. The season opener's next Saturday night at home, the first of six in a row that you'll get a chance to catch Eastern Arizona College at home. Have you ever had seen or had a team that started with six at home? I'm not sure. I don't <laughs> think so. I, I don't think – I even asked your dad, and uh, he said, I don't think I've seen a team ever start with six on the road. And I asked you earlier this season, how do you manage that? And he says, I don't know, but I am not going to ask <laughs> because you like six in a row at home. And uh, you start the season the 27th at home, 6 o'clock, against the University of Sonora, Mexico. And talk a little bit about how that game came apart. It has to do something with, with you guys taking part in the bowl game in Chihuahua a couple yeah. years ago. Well, we've, uh, we've established a good working relationship with the Mexican colleges. Um, they want to improve their game. You know, uh, football is a little bit, uh, you know, it's a second nature to, to soccer over there, and they're trying to take their game to the highest level. So they want to test themselves against better uh, people. So these are preseason games for them, uh, but yet they're playing to win, and, and they've been working right. all summer to try to beat us. And, uh, you know, so it gives, it's better than playing someone twice. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity to, to meet some people from uh, – and, you know, another culture, another lifestyle. And, uh, you know, our kids have enjoyed it. Uh, a year ago, we scrimmaged them. And, nearly uh, and nearly well, got they beat you. us. They, yeah. were, they actually beat us. I think it was 14 to 7, you know. And, you know, we're rotating and playing people. The difference is this year we'll be playing to win. Yeah, it's not a scrimmage this year. It's but actual I, But I'll game. tell you what, even last year, I don't know, rotating some players and stuff, we didn't rotate everybody. And, and they got after us. So, yeah. you know, there is no, uh, no guarantee. I talked to Arizona Western, who had a very good team last year. And, if they didn't hurt the quarterback, they felt they were in trouble. They were down to them early on, too. Well, I think they were didn't they run five nothing. wide and just throw the yeah. ball all the time? Yeah. So they did a great job, and it's going to be a great look. And, and the thing is, if we're not ready to play, we'll get beat. You know? and, 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 and then this, after that, you'll play next, the Thursday after that, uh, September 1st. Uh, not going to play on Labor Day weekend. So September 1st, a Thursday night game against Green, Green River College out of Washington, followed by another team from Washington, the Everett Washington Red Raiders couple of club teams in Washington trying to get to the junior college status, right? Yeah. What they've done is they, they've, uh, they're an actual junior college, but they're, in a, they're really not sponsored by the college. And, and they're in a league. Uh, they all play dues. And we're playing two of the better teams in that conference. But their goal, again, is to uh, play the best. And, mm -hmm. and they've chewed us off. You know, they've, they've took on Eastern Arizona. They've took on Arizona Western. And they've also took on Scottsdale Community College, uh, who's one of the is, is, you know one of these teams are top ranked in our conference, and mm -hmm. so they're not trying to take the tail enders. They're trying to play the right. best. And uh, you know a year ago they played Arizona Western and Snow College, so they haven't hid from anybody. Right. They've took on the best. They think they've improved from a year ago. And, and yeah, they excited. took their lumps last year. And they're excited to. to come here and that's some of the reason why we were able to get the game this year we were able to encourage them to come here you know we may have to next year go back and pay the visit and be on the road and, and make a long road yeah trip. that sounds like fun john <laughs> uh let's go to washington for a couple weeks next year um and then three straight conference games to start the season at home against glendale mesa and scottsdale always nice to play those three guys at home oh there's no doubt uh, um you know we're going to get a test right off the bat with glendale the difference is last year we, we had to play a Glendale team right out of the chute who's been practicing all summer. You know, we just get our kids for two weeks, and, and we're always a little bit behind. Now, the scary thing is, is, is uh, depending on how good these teams were playing early, uh, you know, we could get beat and it could, it could sink our ship there too. But the nice thing is you're not playing a Glendale or, or a Snow or someone like that right away. this early. Right away. You got a couple of weeks to make some mistakes and, and get used to playing as a team and in game situation before you truly get tested. And like I said, the scary thing is we don't know how good these teams are. You know, we could be in a dogfight from game one, two, and right. three. 
which will be good because we will be ready for Glendale when, when conference starts and that. And, you know, we could be in a blowout game, uh, not knowing exactly what we're getting into. Scary. The thing is, is we don't have a whole lot of trade film. They're able to probably get a lot more film on us. So one thing about it, every one of those schools will come gonna, in. Or they're going to know more about you than you do about them. And we got to kind of shoot from the hip and make adjustments on the well, field. Well, the, nice, so. the nice thing, especially offensive though, offensively, is you do what you do. I mean, you're not going to change a lot of a game plan. You can make that in in-game situations. The first time Eastern will be on the road this year will be October 8th. At Pima College, which I, I am assuming is being played at Tucson Electric Park again this year, the outfield of the baseball stadium. You will finish, though, with four of your five on the road. That, that's the downside of starting with six in a row at home. You'll go to Pima, and the next weekend to New Mexico Military, home against Snow College, which is always nice, at Arizona Western, a bye, and then at Phoenix to end the season. Uh, the college, Eastern Arizona College is ranked 18th to start the year. That is the only the one of two or excuse me, three WSFL schools to start the preseason ranking. Arizona Western starts fifth in the country. Snow College starts seventh in the country, which might be the first time in the 10 years I've been covering Eastern that somebody started higher than Snow College in the preseason rankings because they were the perennial favorites for a long time. But Snow College has a brand-new head coach. Tyler Tyler Hughes is taking over. Um, he, in ta- he inherits a team that defeated uh, Iowa, Iowa Western in the top of the Mountains Bowl. And the number one team, Navarro College, is out of Texas. Eastern also ranked in the preseason Dirty 30 from jcgridiron.com at number 28. Uh, so, excuse me, at number 25. So that's, that includes all California schools and everything. So that means top 25 in the country, including California schools. John, are you ready to get this thing started? It, it seems just like yesterday we were, you know, you know, sopping up the tears on the way home from uh, – on Kansas, but uh, back and ready to go. Oh yeah, you know, like I said, it was it was still a great opportunity, a great reward to a, to some sophomores that worked truly hard for Eastern Arizona. And again, uh, the compliment is we've put our program on the map. I can remember speaking to you seven years ago, having our first little conversation right here. And we were talking about what's our, going to be our goal. Our goal is going to put Eastern on the map, and, and we've done that. In there's the, a blip there now, so now we've got to just keep it going from there. No doubt. Well, John, appreciate it. Uh, don't forget tonight, Arizona Diamondbacks are on the air. Actually, this more this afternoon. They play at 335 pregame, 405 first pitch here on KATO. Greg Schulte will have the call on that one this afternoon.